I'll take notes. Uh, we left off at implementing an open and transparent policy for the homo- <laughs> What, this? What is it? I, I need it for work and I- Freeze. Like me, you've probably looked at the numerous desktop replacements on the market and thought, if these are so popular, why don't I know anyone who has one? It's a valid question. Who are the people driving ASUS and MSI to create these monstrosities? And more importantly, why? It seems like such a raw deal. You get less performance and less upgradability than a desktop and at a higher price to boot. Though, on the flip side, with the latest chips from Intel, the gap has actually narrowed a lot. In front of me, well, not me, that guy, is a 24 core CPU that turbos to 5.6 gigahertz, a 4K 144 hertz HDR display, and a fully mechanical keyboard. I mean, with a system like that, you can do a whole lot more than just gaming. And we're gonna dig into the creative and professional use cases that are driving people like that to destroy their spines hauling these things around. And of course, we're gonna see how it handles games too, because a lot of what we need to talk about has to do with the RTX 4090 mobile and the misleading marketing that Nvidia is doing around this fast, but misunderstood gaming GPU. Fast like the segue to our sponsor. Gorgeous. Gorgeous is a customer support platform that aims to revolutionize the way businesses interact with their customers. They can respond to inquiries through a variety of methods, all through a single unified dashboard. Check out our Gorgeous using the link below. There have always been laptops that aspired to desktop tier performance. Some even went as far as to use desktop chips. But it's only recently that the performance gap between them has become so small that Apple, for example, no longer even designs different CPUs for use in its mobile and desktop lineups. So with that fire burning bright under their butts, Intel has responded with this, the Core i9-13980HX. And while it might not be the most power efficient, chugging back up to 10 times the wattage of their lowest end U-series chips, if the on-paper specs are anything to go by, it should be considerably faster than your gaming desktop is. Yes, even yours, Steven. The result then is a device that is both portable, well, technically portable, and powerful enough to get anything done anywhere. Even if what you wanna get done is gaming at max settings, which I do. For our testing, we used the latest MSI Titan GT77, mainly because we happened to have it also available with previous generation hardware for comparison, but any similarly configured machine with adequate cooling and the same power envelope should perform about like this. We're gonna have both models and more linked down below if you wanna play around with pricing of the various options. Getting straight into our 4K gaming results, it's clear that a lot of the generational performance improvements here are thanks to Nvidia rather than Intel, who managed a very respectable bump in GPU bound titles compared to our older 3080 Ti equipped GT77. MSI is feeding the 4090, the maximum permitted 175 watts when you include dynamic boost, netting us a gain of between 30 to 35% in Hitman 3, F122, and Cyberpunk 2077, with Red Dead Redemption 2 seeing a 49% increase and Assassin's Creed Valhalla jumping by a whopping 60%. Temperatures stayed reasonable while gaming too. 73 degrees is around five more than the 12th gen laptop, but our core clocks were also 400 megahertz higher on average. So why then is everybody complaining about this thing? Okay. Well, look at what happens when we add the desktop 4090 to the charts. It is between 30 and 50% slower, making the naming, well, misleading at best. I mean, this gap in performance makes it look like we're testing two completely different tiers of products. And the pricing is like piling insult on top of injury. Even when we factor in a comparable monitor and peripherals, we're spending an extra $300 for this degraded laptop experience. But with that said, if we come back to our original question, some gamers have very good reasons for accepting these compromises. We heard loud and clear that for folks who spend more time away from home than in it, say living in a barracks or a dorm room, working as a seafarer or a long haul driver, or even if you're just a game loving executive, a desktop might technically be a better PC, but being able to actually use your laptop every day makes it a far more valuable investment. I also have to wonder too, is this difference even Nvidia's fault? 
maybe the 13980HX isn't all it's cracked up to be, and Team Green's poor GPU is simply being hamstrung by a crap mobile CPU. Unfortunately, tightly integrated mobile devices make it a lot harder for us to isolate variables. I mean, we can't very well plug a desktop 4090 into a laptop and then see how the CPU runs. But what we can do is try a couple of more CPU limited scenarios and CPU specific gaming benchmarks where, no. No excuses, Nvidia. That CPU is fast. Not as fast as her desktop cousin, but close enough that I don't feel completely misled by the similar naming scheme. And close enough that it opens up new use cases for these chonky boys that might not have made sense just a few short years ago. Let me set the stage. And this is actually based on a true story, which is cool. You are in the deepest, darkest bowels of a ship. Your job is to produce a 3D scan of the crew's workspace. The iPhone 12 Pro hasn't been invented yet, so the contractor in charge of running the 3D scanner pulls out one of these? I mean, it looks out of place, right? But I assure you that for plenty of industry professionals, gaming laptops like these ones are their daily driver work machines. And if you stop and think about it, it makes a ton of sense. While they could be served by boring black workstation laptops, the certified hardware tax, man, that makes the mobility tax look like a, like a, a small convenient tax, one that you don't mind paying. I mean, check out these portable workstations from Lenovo and Dell. These are last gen hardware. So smart IT and purchasing managers figured out a long time ago that a clever way to dodge this premium for what is on a silicon level, the same bloody thing, is to buy consumer hardware instead. And I mean, yeah, I guess you could game on it after work or before work or during work, assuming you're stealthy about it, like our new stealth desk pads. A simple all black look and the same excellent micro texture cloth means uh, you need to go to lttstore.com. Whatever the point is. Looking at some of our CPU specific benchmarks, there is a lot for those IT managers to love here. I mean, yeah, you could do it faster on a desktop, but you could also do it from a hotel lobby in the Bahamas on this thing. In our Chromium compile and 7-zip compression and decompression tests, we saw a clear advantage to going 13th gen mobile with it performing closer to our desktop CPU than to a last gen laptop one. And while Y-Cruncher and Handbrake AV1 encoding showed a greater difference to desktop, they do still show a clear generational improvement over 12th gen. Now we suspect that faster mobile memory would help close this gap a little bit, but another factor is also that multi-core workloads tend to favor desktop chips that have much higher power budgets. Speaking of multi-core loads, that brings us nicely to the last big group of people who gravitate towards these machines, creators, makers, and artists. These are the kinds of people who need to be able to pack their entire studio into a single messenger bag and thanks to the rich I.O. that you'll typically find on a desktop replacement, including Thunderbolt, that's as simple as bundling up a dock, a mouse, and a portable monitor, rolling up to a cafe, and enjoying the exact same workflow that you would at the office. This is also a group that tends to benefit from the creature comforts that make their way into premium devices like these. Our MSI unit, for example, has a fully mechanical keyboard with low-profile Cherry MX switches, with numpad, a factory calibrated VESA certified HDR display, and high speed two and a half gig wired networking for running projects off of a network share. Once again for this group, Intel's 13th Gen HX series flagship shines, managing a FLAC audio encode only a single second slower than its desktop counterpart and seven seconds faster than its older outdated brother. And the young pup making the old dog look bad continues in Cinebench R23, where multi-core scores are up 10,000 over our 12th gen equipped machine and only behind the desktop by 3,200. While Blender GPU testing reveals the same embarrassing difference between mobile and desktop 4090s that we observed when gaming, Blender CPU has our mobile chip landing right in between the desktop and our old laptop with essentially the same story in Procyon, Premiere, and Photoshop. So for the folks who need these machines, whether it's for heavy scientific applications in the field, visual effects for our live events, aerial surveying, industrial automation, outside of Nvidia's relative weakness this time around, 13th gen looks like a big win. However, soon we're gonna be getting our hands on a new generation of AMD laptops that are equipped with Ryzen 7000 
And if the efficiency we've seen on the desktop for those is anything to go on, it's going to be a very interesting fight. Interesting, like this message from our sponsor. Gizmogo, chances are you've got some old electronics just collecting dust somewhere. It's OK. Gizmogo knows this, so they came up with a simple and hassle-free way to sell your older broken devices. All you need to do is select your device on their website, answer a few questions about its condition, and get an instant free quote. Once you've accepted the offer, Gizmogo will send you a prepaid shipping label so you can ship your device to them for free. And what does Gizmogo do with all these products? They refurbish and reuse as many devices as possible, giving them a new lease on life and reducing e-waste. So if you're looking to declutter your home and get some extra cash while also doing your part for the environment, Gizmogo is the perfect solution for you. Visit the link below and see how much you can get for your old tech devices. If you liked this look at the latest and greatest in mobile performance, maybe you'd also like to check out the complete opposite, this AliExpress gaming laptop that not only didn't have an i9, it had a Celeron. Did it even have dedicated graphics? I don't think so. Yeah, no.